All right, continuing with 9.3, we're in 9.3b, elementary algebra. We're using the quadratic formula. My eraser didn't work there. There we go. And we are ready for example 4. And they give us x squared minus 9 equals 0. All right, so remember, it has to be in this form in order to solve it. Okay? If it's in this form, we can solve it. Do we have an x squared? Yes. Do we have a num uh, a regular x? No. Do we have a regular number? Yes. All right, so what do we do if we don't have a regular number? Well, that's simple enough. We're going to still write it as a quadratic equation. We have zero x's, right? So this actually doesn't mean anything, but it just tells you what your a is, which is 1 from right here. It also tells you what your b is, which is this number right here, 0, and your c is negative 9. So, back to our formula. Are you starting to get this formula a little bit? Okay, so let's plug in our numbers, a, b, and c. So, b is 0. B squared, 0 squared, minus 4 times A times C, all over 2A, which is 1. Okay, so this can go away. We don't need a negative 0. All right, so we're good there. Um, let's see what else we've got. We have plus or minus 0. Negative 4 times negative 9 is a positive 36 over 2. So this is plus or minus square root of 36 over 2. What is the square root of 36? 6. So if we have plus or minus 6 over 2, that means plus 6 over 2 is 3. Minus 6 over 2 is negative 3. So our answer is plus or minus 3, for example, number 4. Okay, example number 5. x squared plus 2x equals 3 halves. Alright, so again, it has to be in this form. If it's not in this form, it can't be solved using the quadratic formula. So we have to make this a 0. So how do we get that to be a 0? We move it to the other side. So we subtract 3 halves from both sides. Put it in the right order. Okay, there we are. We're in the correct order. Life is good. Okay, so what is the nastiness about this? Right there. We've got that stinking fraction. So if you remember, we would kind of alluded to this and done it a couple times. If you multiply the entire equation by the common denominator, which in this case is a 2, it will get rid of the fraction. So 2x squared plus 2 times 2 is 4x. So we're distributing minus 6 over 2, because we multiply the 2 times the 3, equals 0. Now, the 6 over 2, what is 6 over 2? 3. So we notice we got rid of the fraction. Okay. So a now is 2, b is 4, and c is negative 3. There we go. Um, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And again, I would suggest you write that every stinking time. So b, negative 4 plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4. a is 2. c is negative 3 all over 2a, and a is 2. All right, let's start solving inside the uh, radical sign. All right, let's do it in pink so we don't get everything mixed up. 16, negative, negative, gives me a pot. 4 times 3 is 12, times this 2 is 24, over 4. 
Alright, so we've got negative 4 plus or minus the square root 24, 34, 40 over 4. Okay? So, what are we going to do with this? Well, let's see if we can simplify our square root of 40. What two numbers multiplied together give me 40 and I can take the square root of one of them? Okay. Square root of 4 is 2. Bring the 2 out, left with a 10 inside, over 4. So, that is what we've got, and that looks pretty good, except that can even be reduced. So let's do this in white. Alright, I can factor a 2 out of there. And what is 2 over 4? 1 half. And we don't even need that, right? So, there is our answer. That's all you need to do. Alright, one more, and we will be done with uh, this lesson on the quadratic formula. Hopefully, you're kind of getting the hang of it, and it doesn't seem so wretched. Alright, so let's go ahead and put x plus 2 times x minus 1 equals 9. Okay, so what are we going to do with that? It isn't even in quadratic form. Well, it's not in quadratic form, so we put it in quadratic form. So we do the FOIL method. x squared outside, inside, last. Combine my outside and inside. I've got to make this a 0, so I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides. So I have x squared plus 1x minus 11 equals 0. So I guess there's a 1 there too. Alright, so there's my equation. And I know that my a is 1, my b is 1, and my c is negative 11. And I'm going to use my quadratic formula. Alright, so let's plug the numbers a, b, and c in. So negative b, negative 1, plus or minus the square root of 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 11, all over 2 times 1. Gives me negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared, negative 4, negative 11 is a positive 44, all over 2. So this will be the square root of 45. So negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 45 all over 2. Alright, so that is the answer. At this point now, we're going to look at the answer and see if it can be simplified. So once you come up with an answer where pretty much you have one number here, one number under here, and one number down here, you've got it, the answer there. Now what we have to do is just work on the answer to make it as simple as possible. So we're going to look at the radical and find two numbers multiplied together that give us 45 that I can take the square root of. The square root of that gives me negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 9 is 3. Okay. Now, can anything be reduced? Can I factor anything out of the numerator? No. Can I reduce anything if I split these up? No, nothing can be reduced. So I'm just going to leave it like that. Okay, so that is example six. Now, the problems that I just went over are pretty much going to be exactly like the ones in the problem set you're going to do. The only thing I'm going to do now with you is kind of help you set some of these problems up in the problem set into that quadratic form, into ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. All right, so if you have one like, um, well, like 40, 
x squared plus 1 equals negative 10x. All right, we've got to get everything on the left and a 0 on the right. So I'm going to add a 10x here and add a 10x here. And it has to be in this order. It has to be x squared and then an x and then the number and then it's in quadratic form so that you can use your quadratic formula to solve this. Okay? So, very, very important to be able to make sure that it's in the right format or the quadratic formula will not work because you're going to plug the wrong numbers in. So, as you're going through that, just make sure that's the case. And I think you'll be okay with Lesson 9.3.